Hot takes, great debates, highlights, basketball. Something weird happened in the NBA. Actually, a couple of weird things happened. And these are two of the weirdest storylines in the NBA. I want to start with the Toronto Raptors. Last night, their 15-game winning streak came to an end. That's the second longest winning streak in the NBA this season. Remember, the Bucks went on a pretty long winning streak earlier this season. Last night, the Raptors lost to the Brooklyn Nets in Brooklyn, right? And I know the Raptors were not 100%. But don't get me that. They haven't been 100% this entire very random winning streak. Um, but the Nets beat them. And I think it speaks to two really, really, really thing, really uh, standout things for me thus far in this basketball season. See, you see, you watching my video right now because you actually love the game of basketball. You know those analysts that get paid a lot of money to watch basketball? You see, a lot of them don't watch the games night in, night out. I do. You do. Right? And what I've seen from the Toronto Raptors this year... I've seen a lot of guys step up. Essentially, what has happened is Pascal Siakam has stepped up to become Kawhi Leonard of that team, right? And there have been like four guys that step up to, to kind of replace who Pascal Siakam was for that team last year since he had to step into a new role. We've got, the, obviously, Terrence Davis has been amazing for them. Norman Powell, before he got injured, has been really good for them as well. Uh, we've seen Fred Van Fleet take another leap in the right direction. He's about to get paid this summer. And the reason why he's going to get paid, see, a couple years ago, if you would have asked me this question, I've been a, a big Fred Van Fleet guy out of, you know, I think it was at, uh, what was he at, Wichita State, if I'm not mistaken. I've been a big Fred Van Fleet guy since he got out of college, right? I've seen him in his Sweet 16 run. Um, two years ago, you would have heard me say, I would give up on Kyle Lowry and go in the direction of Fred Van Fleet. I don't have that stance today. Unfortunately, I believe the Toronto Raptors are going to lose Fred Van Fleet. Now, if I were the Raptors, I would pay Fred. That's me personally, but I understand this is a business, and I understand you can't keep everybody, right? The reason why I can't pay Fred Van Fleet is because Kyle Lowry has been amazing. I am not a Kyle Lowry guy. If you know me, you know I have not been a DeMar DeRozan or a Kyle Lowry guy. Uh, I, I thought they, look, one series against LeBron and the Cavs like four or five years ago, DeMar DeRozan was playing awful. He flat but said, we can't guard LeBron. I just didn't like that as a competitor. I didn't like hearing that come out of his mouth. You an all-star start an all-star game. You tell him you can't guard this man. You don't have a scheme. You and your coaching staff can't come together with something. I didn't like that. And I blamed not only DeMar DeRozan, I blamed the other guy that was making that all-star team too in, in Kyle Lowry. Well, we now know it wasn't Lowry's fault. It was DeRozan's fault. Lowry's now an NBA champion. You know, I really love the game that Lowry has been playing this year. He's a slept-on leader. Look, say what you want. He They respect him. They like their guy. And he's just got this really cool pace to himself that really works for that Raptors team, right? Uh, and it, it works. It works. He deserves to be a lifer in Toronto. And for that reason alone, I'm not mad at the Raptors lose Fred Van Fleet because they don't want to pay two uh, guys, you know, two undersized guards starting point guard money. So I get it. I'm, again, I would keep Fred Van Fleet if you could, but I get it if they don't want to pay a guy like that to come off their bench as you just gave Siakam that bag last summer. But they could afford it technically. Anywho. That's been one of the most slept on teams in the NBA. I want to finish up on Toronto here. I would not be surprised if they take the Bucks six games. Now, I do believe when it gets to, into the nitty-gritty of the playoffs, you're really counting on their head coach, Nick Nurse, to find some type of way to guard Giannis again. Now, it's easier said than done when you got Kawhi Leonard, who could essentially take Giannis, the, the MVP to be last year, out of the, a, a series, which is what Kawhi did. Siakam doesn't have the girth, the muscle, or the experience yet to do that. Remember, before Kawhi guarded Giannis in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, this dude had experience guarding LeBron in the Finals back-to-back -back years. I'm just saying. So don't let's you know let's put it out there. Kawhi Leonard is probably the best defender we got one-on-one -on -one in the league right now. It's not going to be easy for Pascal Siakam to do what Kawhi did last year. But if Nick Nurse can come up with a strategy, I believe that Bucks team. They could end up going six or seven games with the Raptors in the conference finals this year. Do not sleep on Toronto. There is a very small chance this team can make it to the finals back-to-back -back years. Don't sleep on Toronto. They now have that championship pedigree. And these guys, you know, they feel like Kawhi should have stayed around for at least another year or two and ran it back with them, right? Because they feel like they were the most, you know, ready team. And they look it. If they have Kawhi with what they got now, Kawhi would have still been able to lower manage with the Raptors this year. Ironically, their record would have been probably better than the Clippers this year. So I'm just saying, I, I think that Raptors team is one you want to, you don't, you don't want to sleep on. Now let's swing over. 
to the team that ended their 15 game winning streak. How about the Brooklyn Nets? When Kyrie Irving plays, when he's active, when he's available, or when he's about to return, this team's awful. Now it took them a couple games after Kyrie came back this time around with that shoulder injury. They they came out losing, but now they seem to get it, you know, they're getting it back going again and they're back in their winning ways. I'm telling you, man, when Spencer's running the point, when Karis Levert is the primary offensive uh, guy for this team, they're not bad. They're, they're a sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. When, when Kyrie's there, they're probably the ninth or tenth best team in the Eastern Conference. That doesn't make sense. You add an all-star and you drop down three or four spots in the East? Well, what does that mean? To me, that means... Because we all know Kyrie Irving is talented. I couldn't tell you 14 other guys in this league that are more talented than Kyrie Irving. I'd be lying to you. And I'd just be a hater. But a lot of times, talent doesn't work good with others. We've seen everything that tells us Kyrie Irving doesn't work good with other people. Reportedly, in the Eastern Conference playoffs, this would have been 2017, right? His last year in Cleveland, he reportedly stopped talking to his teammates in the playoffs. You have teammates on the record who said that. Kyrie stopped talking to them. You know, they got some talking to guys that was on that team. That was like the Channing Fry Richard Jefferson year, right? Or right before that or something like that. They got some guys that will talk around that, that team. Damon Jones and all that. They'll talk. J.R. Smith, they'll talk. And LeBron will leak stuff through sources. They swear that Kyrie Irving wouldn't talk to them for two weeks in the middle of the playoffs. During that Boston series uh, when they were taking on IT and the Celtics at the time. They swear Kyrie wasn't talking to them for two weeks at a time, except on the court. He wouldn't talk to the team outside of on the on the court. What? Your leader can't do that. Uh, obviously, he told the Boston Celtics that, that I want to be here long term if you guys would have me. And then he jointed and bolted out last summer. I mean, everything this guy has shown us is that he, he's not a, a pretty, he's not a, a great guy to be around. This year, in the middle of an interview, after he just came back after missing like 15, 20 games. The first thing he does in the interview is tell the, the reporters, yeah, a lot of these guys won't be here next year. We know who's going to be here, like me, Levert, Spencer, but a lot of these other guys, they won't be here. Joe Harris won't be here. If you're not, if your name not DeAndre, KD, Spencer, or Karis Levert, you won't be here next year. Joe Harris, one of the best three-point shooters in the league, he ain't going to be here next year. Like Magic Johnson said, I'm not going to be here. He, he's flat-footed calling out teammates. When these teammates have played more games this season with the Nets, built up more sweat equity over the last couple years with the Nets, he's saying that they won't be there next year. Way to be a leader. Look, I'm not trying to attack Kyrie Irving, the person, but if you watch basketball, you know I'm not lying. See, here's what's going to happen in the comment section of this post. People who don't watch the game are going to say, you're stupid. You don't know basketball. The Raptors are not legit. And how can you say the Nets are better without Kyrie Irving? But for the people who watch the game and know this game, and watch the game, that's the most important part. Do you watch the game? If you watch the game, you know that I'm not lying to you. You know my eyes are not deceiving me. That Nets basketball team, much better when Kyrie Irving doesn't play. They play as a team. They play harder. They play harder. And be clear, you had to get Kyrie Irving. Look, it was all or nothing. I believe like you believe. You don't get Kevin Durant if you don't get Kyrie. He wanted to come with another guy, reportedly Kawhi Leonard. Kevin Durant during free agency last summer. Got on the phone. Where your head at, bro? What you thinking? Okay, you think about doing that? Good. Me and my boy, we're going to do something else. KD swears he wasn't going to be a New York Nick. He swears that he was never considering a Nick. He just said it on Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson's podcast. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Now, KD has no reason to lie. I believe Kevin Durant was sold on being a Nick, uh, being a, in New York. I don't think his allegiance was to the Nets or the Knicks. I think he was open-minded. That's what I believe. Come on, bro. His agent. Come on. I just—it's too many connections to that New York market for me to believe. KD wasn't gonna consider the Knicks, but the moment he tore his Achilles, he lost all his leverage. All his leverage went to the Kawhis of the world the Kyrie's of the world, or any other free agent out there last summer that was of that caliber that he wanted to play with. And I think Kyrie wanted to be a net. Kyrie has consistently let us know he wanted to be a net. That, there's been no secret, right? I think Katie lost that leverage, and he had to go roll with his guy, Kyrie. 
I would have loved to see if, if KD didn't join a team uh, this year, you know, last year, just sat it out for a year, and then signed with a team this year after kind of seeing the landscape of things. But he obviously he wanted to get his re. I know he's got money, but you want to you don't want to spend your money. He wanted to have his rehab and all that taken care of by Brooklyn, right? He he, he went through the net surgeon to get his uh, injury looked at and, and you know get everything taken care of with his Achilles. He wanted to rehab under the Nets watch, which I get. I, I get that. Um, but I'll just say this. The Nets are better without Kyrie Irving. Now, next year, when KD's there, there's a good chance the Nets will look better. Kyrie will probably excel with another all-star guy. We've seen this dude be great with LeBron. Be clear. KD's still in his prime. There's a lot of workout videos of KD going around. He looks good, right? So if, if Kyrie and KD are together... I'm sure that team's going to work, which means between Spencer, Levert, one of these guys is going to have to get the boot. Not going to be able to keep all these scores around. It's not enough. It's only one basketball. I, I, I think Kyrie will be fine next year, but this year, to me, Kyrie got exposed as a, a terrible leader. You, you, you weren't a good leader, and clearly you stopped talking to your teammates. That Boston Celtics team is better without you. They're really good with Kimball Walker leading their team this year. Jason Tatum is blossoming. You know, I, I just think... That Brad Stevens looks to be having fun again coaching. I, I think uh, Kyrie wasn't a good fit in Boston. They were a mess last year. And the Nets are better without him this year. Now, when he gets another all-star caliber guy, I think it'll push him to the next level. And I think he'll be back to being uh, the two or three option. He's not a number one. Borderline, not a two. But when he can be like two and a half for your team, great in that spot. You, you had to get Kyrie because you had to get KD. It's simple as that. Do I believe the Nets love the idea of losing Russell? If they could, you think they wouldn't have wanted to keep D'Angelo Russell and just bring in KD? Yeah, obviously you weren't going to be able to do that. KD wasn't coming without his road dog. And just so happens, it is what it is. You in the sports, we got you. NFL news, I got you. NBA news, NBA highlights, NBA full coverage. Feature stories, all that great stuff, I got you. We even got a little bit of Madden and 2K mixed in. Subscribe to this platform, and I got you. More quality content on the way. Subscribe.